Lou, one of the things you said that piqued my curiosity was that you don't like to go to institutions. I don't know this for a fact, but I've heard from people that, that do know you that you've um, refused to go to institutions, that you've refused to give talks at institutions, that you don't want to tour the campus of institutions. In many ways, even though you have this fervor about integration and about caring about this population, isn't that a, a little bit like turning your back on those people? It got to the point where uh, emotionally I couldn't bear to go to those places. I mean, I, 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 just, I just couldn't do it. Um, the, the last, not the last time, the next to the last time, there was a, uh, you see, the smells get me. The screams get me. Seeing large numbers of people self-stimulate on the walls get me. The fecal matter on the floor gets me. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't sleep at night. I can't stop thinking about it. You know, I mean, I'm, I, um, the, 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 the most telling experience I've ever had is when, uh, and this is not something that just is, you know, just one night. I mean, this is an accumulation of years and years of, of, of trying not to notice these things, trying not to remember these things, of explaining them the way, the, the, or trying to justify them or something. It, it came years, and then you get to the point where your defenses don't let you handle it anymore, and you say, this is horrible. I mean, this is no way for human beings to live. And so one time, we we're going we're gonna to testify against the state of um, New Hampshire in Laconia, yeah, this, this, this institution. And so the, the attorneys, uh, one of which was Dick Cohen, who now works in Minnesota, and another one was John uh, McIntyre. It took me up there, and it was night. And this place had opened in 1906, you know, when Seguin came to America. This is one of the places that they, you know, he went around talking to all these, doing this Dorothy Dix thing in mental retardation. This is 1906 now, and they still had 600 people in it. And, and, and I'd walk up on the grounds at night because uh, we, we got there late. And the best time to ever see an institution is at night anyway. And, and, and it, it, was, it was the shadows, the people in large rooms with no clothes running around. The shadows you could see from outside, and the, and the lights and the glass, and then the, hearing the screams, and the glass broke. Somebody put their fist through a window, and then you go there and you see these people tied to chairs and people sticking food down their faces. I mean, it just it just threw me. It was it. I couldn't. I knew. I knew. I I couldn't deal with it anymore emotionally. I couldn't deal with it, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. You know, it's it, it's. Um, I imagine it's like. You know, I, I, there's, a, there's a trial in Israel now, this Ivan the Terrible. I don't know if he is or not, but the trial is about this person, Ivan the Terrible. And, and, and the people who had been there have to relive these experiences of seeing, seeing people treated the way they were treated in, in these concentration camps. And I just couldn't deal with it. And so I, I, at that time I was working in Wisconsin, at an, you know, a consultant, and I came home and I, and I said, I can't do it. I can't go anymore. So I quit that. And I stopped taking jobs. We used to go do these workshops with these people. Let's do language training on institution wards. And, and uh, they would come and whatever. Toilet training was always, can you help us with toilet training? You know, so they'd have 15 commodes lining 15 people up. I mean, it, it was just, you can't do it. You can't do it. Plus the idea of, the, of, of an individual and a life in that environment. And so I they say, well, we quit. We're not going to work there anymore. I'm not going to take any jobs speaking. I, I just don't want to do anything to keep them open any longer. And, and that, uh, I, I mean, there was one job we took in Kansas, and they were dedicating a new cafeteria, and they asked me to speak at a dedication, and I, I, my dedication sp speech was that we should close the place. We just, you know, and then you do that a couple of times, you don't get too many invitations, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think the only thing I can think of with this cafeteria is close it, get these people out of here. I mean, let's... let's to stop this madness, building more institutions, putting more money into these places. And, and also, um, I mean, that was, the, that was the, the deep, deep psychological part of it, deep emotional part of it, but there was also the rational part, the professional part. We were building better lives for people. It's better living in a community. 
it's nice doing real work in a real world. It's great using, experiencing the richness and variety of, a, of, of our towns and cities. It's better when you compare what you have there with what you have here. It's better. So it wasn't all just, um, you know, I, I can't take the heat anymore. Or I don't like to see blood. I mean, it's not, it's not only that. It's certainly part of that. None of that, but it's better out there.